And Ben Boache is actually saying that Gridco needs to speak. The point is that we don't even have to hear from Gridco. Why do we have to hear from Gridco? But ECG says that the problem has been solved. The back stops with the president and his vice president. Okay. Let the back me... stops with them. So this is our conversation. Why are they shifting the blame to Gridco? This is our conversation. During the NDC's morning. time, did they say, ask Gridco and not John Mahama? Didn't they put the blame at the doorstep of John Mahama because he was the commander in chief and that the back stopped with him? Why are they running away from that? Anyway, this is our conversation this morning. Do join us, sending your messages to us. What do you think about it? Should Gritko say something about it? Should ECG release a timetable? Do you think ECG is speaking the truth with regards to the problem being solved or not? Anyway, so um, let me see if we have something. Okay, we don't have yet. But um, Bernard, let me ask you, did you also experience Tumso? Well, Rose, good morning to you and good morning to Philemon. As is typical of me, over the weekend, I was not even in Accra. Mm. But where I was, I experienced even the worst form of it. Really? Because I was all the way in Bongo Swing, attending the funeral of the father of King Ayisoba, one of Ghana's talented artists, a man who has brought so much smiles in the hearts and minds of many Ghanaians. And I had to join them at the funeral ground in celebrating the father who was 110 years. I was expecting the Ghana, what do they call it, musician union. I was expecting Gamro. And I was expecting most of the artists to participate in. In fact, before then, I had gotten a call from the legend, Amanziba. That was last week when I was in the Upper West Region. And he told me that he wanted to come for the program. And I said I was in Wa. And you know, there is always the assumption that the North is just a small corner. And I said I was in Sankana. And Kinoya you know, village is several miles away from me. I need to get to Accra and reorganize myself to be there. Only to get there to realize that, apart from few Northern musicians, the absence of the National Musician Union was massively felt. Mm. For me, I didn't even know that King Aisobel was and wearing his I was, I was very... Did he give invitation to these people and they didn't make it? If, if, if Amanziba would call me to find out whether I was up north, okay. it meant that they have full knowledge of it. Mm. They have full knowledge. And Amanziba is not a mean player. And of course, when I got there and I didn't see him, I asked. I actually called him to find out why he wasn't there. He wasn't there. And he said they were the TGMA. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, TGMA and that he's chairman or something, the reason for which he could not. Um, he didn't know about the event, and that's why he couldn't come. But I didn't take it kindly. It was terrible for me. And I think that the um, majority of us when there is something that happens in southern Ghana, we go there in our numbers. We support our artists and other persons in southern Ghana. When it happens to one of them up north and they don't show the same level of zeal, I think that the nation's unity and cohesion mm. is broken. That said, I don't think that we went for a funeral, really. We went for a celebration of life because at 110 years, Oh, wow. Um, she, he had played his part. He did what he had to do. And to bring forth one of his children, like King Ayesoba, who, whether you like it or not, will sing songs like, I want to see you, my father, mm -hmm. the champion, no easy, and other things. That, even if you were not happy, you will have to get into it. Yeah. Within that enclave, we suffered massive doom so you'll be there and you know the heat around mm. so then the lights were going on and off then you ask ecg is not up north it's netco mm. so how come that ecg's difficulties are affecting netco, netco. so it means that there is something mm. that is tragically wrong with our power supply in the country. And it is important that our leaders become honest 
they admit to the problem so that together we'll be able to resolve it. Anything that less than that is a disaster for me. Mm. Anyway, and uh, so um, Philemon, you're, you're, you also experienced it, like you were oh, saying. Yes, How yes, many yes. days did you experience I was you in the water region. I was in the water region. He doesn't like going home, so. <laughs> oh, Chief, this, uh, I go home, actually. I go home every now and then. Clandestine. And where I'm not able to physically go, whatever it requires to facilitate the proper functioning of my absence goes. Uh -huh. that's Chief, what, I hope you understand what I mean. That, that's what many people say. No, but you see. You see, uh -huh. your physical presence adds a lot of glamour and excitement, particularly to the many young people who feel disadvantaged, who, when you go, like mostly when I go home, majority of our young people will come, and then like, oh, so you too, you come from this community, and then you've been able to make it to the top. They get inspired, mm -hmm. they want to get there. Mm -hmm. And so when they see you and they say, oh, this is lawyer Philemon, he is in Accra, then you see that somebody said, oh, then I also become a lawyer. Yeah. Well. Uh, so it's not the resources we send. I could agree more with anyway, a very distinct yeah. chief. Mm. And uh, I'm making frantic efforts to be home more often than I am. So I will carry you along <laughs> this weekend. We'll be in the country. <laughs> chief, <laughs> chief, I'm open to that. I'm open to that, chief. Anyway, yes, you were making a point. See, the point about this energy thing, I think, yes, it's a case of a government that does not want to be truthful to its people. And I think that the core of governance is a certain responsibility of being truthful to the people you lead. You can't lie to the people you lead. You cannot. Some would argue that it's only under national security considerations that you are not bound to tell all of the truth. But to the extent that there's no national security implication, a government is obligated to be absolutely truthful to the people that elected them. Mm. You see, all around, on this table, all of us have experienced doing so from different parts of this country. You in Greater Accra, he from the Upper East Region, me from the Volta Region. Go out and speak to the Ghanaian people. People are experiencing doing so in Upper East, Upper West, Volta, uh, Oti, Brongahafu, are everywhere in this country. Doing so is happening. But yet the government, yet those that have been entrusted with the responsibility mm -hmm. of ensuring that utilities are enjoyed by the people of Ghana who look us in the face, spit at us, and tell us untruths. This is the state of the Nanadu Baumia government, a government that cannot be truthful to the people of this country. You remember, under the NDC government, we were very honest to the people of Ghana. Mm. We said that since Nkrumah, since the Akusumbu Dam, no major investment in energy had happened. And that's a fact. You can tell me I'm lying if, I'm, if, if it's not true. No major, not Rolex, not Mills, not Kofo, had invested in the expansion of the energy infrastructure in Ghana. John Mahama came and was confronted with the reality because Ghana's population had increased. Industrialization that had been started by uh, Mills' government, Kofo's government, had cashed up with us. Consumption for energy had increased. The ripple effect of the population growth of Cote d'Ivoire, of Togo, of Benin, all those countries that benefit from Ghana's electricity, they had all increased. So that meant that there was a certain pressure on the energy infrastructure we have in Ghana. Aside that, there's also the issue of equipment that hardly are replaced. Over the years, the same equipment have been running and running and running. What did John Mama do? John Mama looked at us in the faces and told us the bitter truth. And that is leadership. But isn't that what cost you your elections? You see, today, the people of Ghana remember that they dealt John Mahama a great deal of injustice, a great deal of unfairness. The people of Ghana prefer to be told the truth than to be lied to like this government is doing. Yes, we paid the consequence. The people of Ghana painted us because of the leadership the propaganda leadership of the MPP, that the NDC was inefficient in handling the energy sector, when the reality was that we we're being truthful to the people of Ghana. And we're not just being truthful, we're also investing monumentally in fixing the problem. At the day John Mahama was living office, we had fixed Doomso and had excess capacity in energy generation in this country. We handed over a robust, solid, strong, efficient energy sector to the MPP government. So if you fix it, why are we going through this? The fact of the matter is that when it comes to energy generation, we have independent power producers. 
There are two things. Mm. One is the issue of independent power producers. They are the ones bringing gas. You look at Atuabu gas, you look at Ameri, all of these other uh, Asogli, Sunon Asogli. They are all independent power producers. And their contribution to the national grid is what the people of Ghana depend on. So what it means is that the government of Ghana has a responsibility to pay these independent power producers. Because if Asogli is giving us energy, we have to pay for it. If Ameri is giving energy, we have to pay for it. At Tuabo, we have to service it. The gas is not cheap. We pay for it. But this government has not been able to fulfill its financial obligations to the independent power producers. What does this tell us? It tells us that the country is broke. Because if we had the resources, and I owed you, if I owed you, Rosalie, mm. I have a duty to pay you. Anyone who cannot pay his debts has no integrity. But we know that the country has, you know, gone through a certain turmoil uh, in the last few years, especially with COVID and Russia-Ukraine war, right? And so probably that is why, you know, <laughs> we are facing these power outages with regards to the cost that we are owing. Rosie, you would agree with me that the issue of Russia and Ukraine Because they and affected our, our cities. So it's an overflagged horse. An overflagged horse is the most convenient, lazy excuse. Wasn't Togo affected by Russia-Ukraine war? Even Togo. Burkina Faso, when they're affected by Russia-Ukraine war. Somalia, Somalia, Djibouti. Where they're not all affected by Russia. And these are not even, with great respect, like very, like they're not some of the best countries in the world when we come to their GDPs and all of that. But these countries do not claim to have been affected adversely by Russia and Ukraine and COVID, like how the lazy Baumi and Akufado are saying. Kenya, under the leadership of first Uhuru, Kenyatta, and now William Ruto, their economy has grown over the years. And Kenya is now one of the leading economies in Africa. There used to be the case that Ghana is the gateway to Africa. We heard that so conveniently over the years. Unfortunately, today, we have lost that to Kenya. Is it, can't we actually say that this is uh, because of the two political parties we've given power to? Because no, these no, two no, no, parties no, 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 have no, no, run no, us down. No. Maybe we should look for a third force it, like the PMC to well, give it. Well, I, I agree that uh, political participation must be open. I agree. But the fact of the matter is that it cannot be the case that the two parties have failed the people of this country. No, the NDC has not. It is the MPP that is failing the people of Ghana. So the NDC what is their not. record? What is their record in energy intervention? None. And the point I am making is that they have failed in paying the independent power producers. Now, the independent power producers are paid in dollars. Mm. The same leadership of Baumia and Akufuadu has inflicted the most monumental disaster on the performance of the city against global currencies. Today, the city has 14 cities to the dollar. Okay. Today, uh, the pound, let me, let me land. Okay. Today, the pound mm. is almost at 17 cities to the dollar. Uh, to the city, I mean, the city to the, to the city, pound. Yeah. So the fact of the matter is that if you owe anyone in dollars, mm -hmm. you are going to pay may, way more in Ghana cities. So what have you done? You've inflicted your, you, you, they say you shot your own foot. That's what the government has done. Now they can't pay the independent power producers because the debt they owed, let's say you owe them, say, $50 million, and that would have been equivalent to, say, times 14 in Ghana cities, times three when NEC was in power. Now it's going to be times 14. Well, uh, will ECG give us a timetable or the problem has been solved? Well, we don't know yet. But what I can assure you is that when you go to Franco Trading Enterprise, you can get phone pa pa pa. I mean, all the gadgets that you're looking for, Franco Trading Enterprise has got it for you. Is it a phone you're looking for? And with a phone, let's look at the brands. You know, back in the day when we were using Nokia and all of that, Nokia has some cool phones now, you know. Uh, probably you might not find it on the market, but you find the original ones at Franco Trading Enterprise. Is it Samsung you want? Is it an iPhone you want? Count the number. What? There's an iPhone 6, iPhone 7, all the way to 15. They have it all covered for you. They also have a tabletop fridges they have smart TVs smart TVs no matter the inch you are looking for the 32 inch all the way to 55 inches they have it and it's good quality they also have the Franco air conditioners as well so I mean from 1.5 HP to 2.5 HP that is the range. So if you think, okay, I'm looking for a 2.5, but I'm confused, just go to Franco Trading Enterprise. They have all of that for you. Also, they have their cameras, the CCTV cameras, because you know what? In this day and age, you have to be very security conscious. 
go to Franco Trading Enterprise for the CCTV cameras. And these CCTV cameras actually will keep you protected wherever you are. So if you are at work and you are wondering what is happening in your home, don't worry. Mm -mm. Those CCTV cameras will tell you exactly what is happening in your home. And it has the accessories as well. So if you want a phone accessory or any accessories, get up to 40% discount. If the accessory is being sold at 300 cities on the market, if you go to Franco Trading Enterprise, the price will definitely drop for you. And so you'll be able to get that accessory at a very affordable price. Now, easy way, let me give you the number. Don't go to Google to pick a number for Franco. Do not. I urge you, do not go to Google to pick a number. The scammers are there. They are working very, very hard. They will scam you. And you think it's Franco. Franco will not scam you. So this is a number to call. 024-642- 2338. 054-642-2338 or 055-593-9311. 055-593-9311. You can also download the app. The app is simple. Just go on Google Play Store and download the app. Franco Trading Enterprise. That's the name of the app. Franco Trading App. Franco Trading app, just download it. Or go to Google, the website is there, www.francotradingenterprise. Now, Franco Trading Enterprise, still phone pop up fee. Dennis is here, he's representing the NPP this morning. And uh, Dennis, you came in a little bit late. I don't know if probably you have um, a caught this morning or something. <laughs> Really nice meeting you. Hey, hey, the way he's dressed on the holiday. Oh, I mean, oh, it's because of Joy Five. Once Brenda calls, uh, whether it's a holiday or not. Wow. We we've got to show up. You've showed up. Yes. Well, this, this is the... if, if I if I had made a small mistake. Would have, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Is it your shadow that made you late or what? You were, no, you, no. You, 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 you know, when I go here, yeah. when I go to your premises, the parking was much of a problem. If we're having a fufu party today. Yes, and I'm not going. Right after here, I'm losing up. Hey, what for who? My chest and my ship. When is your wedding day? I'm not sure. It's not wedding day for this. Hey, wedding day, I don't know what you will. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about the, you know, ECG power outages that we've experienced over the weekend. I know you experienced it too, or less probably you live on uh, planet Jupiter or planet Mars, and so you didn't experience it. But uh, ECG released a statement saying that the problem has been solved. So if you ever experience it, it says uh, not ECG's fault, but it's a localized issue. Uh, also, Ben Boache is saying that Gritco hasn't spoken and uh, Gritco supposed to say something with regards to the power outages that we are in. Should I say? Uh, uh, um, I don't even know the right word to use. So. Well, um, even as we welcome Dennis, uh, let me reiterate that it is sickening for the president in particular not to accept full responsibility of the energy deficit that we are facing today. Mm. Not long ago in 2017, mm -hmm. or prior to 2017, it was President Akufado, then candidate Akufado, who was at the roof shouting that President Mahama should fix the energy deficit that confronted us. This energy deficit, even as we know from records and trends, that could not have been the sole responsibility of John Mahama. Because right after Kwame Nkrumah, and indeed Kwame Nkrumah towers several miles ahead of any African leader. Recall that when Kwame Nkrumah embarked on the construction of the cheapest source of energy, the hydro water sources of energy, mm -hmm. that is still the cheapest source of energy globally. We were told by Buzia and others that Ghana's total energy consumption at the time was just 50 megawatts. And Kwame Nkrumah was embarking on a project that would generate 600 megawatts. Mm. So they considered the Akosombo Dam as a prestigious edifice that was going to waste 
state resources. Kwame Nkrumah was not majored in thought mm. as they were. He taught futuristic, that they were going to expand industries, educational opportunities right. were going to expand, even media houses and others were going to come on board. And that demand for power was going to accentuate. So he put up a 600 megawatt Akosombo plant. So Ghana's total energy was just 50 megawatts. We got Kaiser to take 300 megawatts to do the aluminum at Valco. Then moving forward, they decided that we should export part of, that is how come that we have contracts mm. with Benin, Burkina Faso, Togo, and some parts of Cote d'Ivoire. And so Ghana was exporting the excess. Even at that time, Kwame Nkrumah thought that we needed an energy mix. And so he started talking about nuclear energy. That is how come that the Atomic Energy Commission was put up. He started talking about developing other water bodies like the Ancobra River, like the Bui, and other places where equipment were actually sent. In addition to that, we were to take advantage of renewable energy in solar, in, 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 um, in, in, in wind, and what have you. Along the line in 1966, when Kwame Nkrumah was torpedoed, then everything shattered. No investment was made until Jerry Rollins came with the uh, Takura de Temal plant. Because then we started to see that, no, we cannot rely on Akosombo Dam alone. alone. So the Takura de Temal plant was put in place to begin to generate energy mix for our nation. Then Kufour came, and Kufour did not do anything than to bring what they then describe as toy machines, the strategic reserve plants. You recall? Recuperate the definition of those things that we brought in strategic reserve plan that did not generate one, one, one scintilla of energy for this country, and yet we're paying for renting those things to come into this country. At the end, President Kufo went and invited international evangelists to come and stand on top of Akosombo Dam and raise their hands and start singing Hallelujah, Hosanna, that the rain should fall for Akosombo Dam to be fitted with water sufficient. You understand? So clearly, nothing was done under Kufour than to ask the Lord, God, let the rains fall so that Akosombo Dam, that was without sufficient water, that there will be sufficient water so that we can be able to generate electricity because Kwame Nkrumah put up Akosombo Dam. That did not happen. Somehow, at a point that this nation had to pray for rain so that Akosombo Dam will be filled, Today, when we have rains, we have to open a Kosombo Dam so that it will consume and kill us and destroy us. We are a country of a lot of paradoxes. Then moving forward, Atamils come and said, that, look, we have been flaring gas. President Kufo, you ensure that we started producing oil in commercial mm -hmm. quantities. But the gas that we have been flaring can also be used for electricity generating, to power the thermal plants and what have you. So we put up the Atuabu power plant. That is currently generating about 40% of Ghana's gas requirement, meaning we still have a deficit of 60% gas requirement in this country. What is the sensible thing for any government to do? The because we are still flaring some gas. Yep. So do 60%, I mean, so that the total gas requirement of this nation will be locally produced and procured. Mm -hmm. This one, you don't go to market to buy the sense. <laughs> this is sense that is available to us. That's why we have only fitted 40% through the Atuabo, get another gas company. But we are busy employing people and over stocking mm -hmm. Ghana Gas Company, mm -hmm. when we could have generated another gas company yeah. so that we will be able not only take gas, but also fix the energy deficit. Then John Mama comes to say, look, I'll fix the problem. Yeah. Dr. Kobna Donko had to lose his job because he promised that by December, November, yeah. if the energy situation was not fixed. Of course, we were able to get the generation, but we're not able to connect it to the system. And because of that, Dr. Kwabina Donko resigned. As we speak today, when Akufado took over, they told us that we had excess energy capacity in this country, excess surplus. 
So if we have surplus in the system, why do we still have doom so? So it meant that they told a lie. So there is no excess energy anywhere. Mm. So today, reality has confronted us. Then in November 2023, you have the Minister for Energy, Matthew Poku Prempe, come to tell us that they have signed an agreement with two power companies to generate 750 megawatts. So November 2023 to date. Five months. What have we done to be able to generate the 750 megawatts? And in any case, just look at the contrast. In one breath, we say we have excess energy, surplus energy. In another breath, you say that you are signing power purchase agreement to generate 750 megawatts. Mm. But now ECG is saying the problem has been fixed. Which problem? Ah. Where have they? Look, the independent power producers, the IPPs, says that government owes them a lot. And yes. ECG admits mm -hmm. to their indebtedness that you owe us. We generate power. And when we finish generating the power, you are unable to pay us. There was a deadline from PURC for them to pay the IPP. That was, that was March 25th. It, yes. It's passed. And it's not done. So clearly, the problem we have is that the independent power producers are unable to supply. And because they are unable to supply, the problem we have today is a liquidity trap. So now that we've past the date, what's going to happen? Of course, to, uh, PURC yeah. should issue the sanctions because they are a regulatory body. Yeah. And when they give instructions, those instructions ought to be respected. See, we cannot be toying. Look, there is a popular kebab joint in Bolgatanga. When I left Bongo Swing, mm. we went to Bolga. And the young man said, he went and bought um, a ram mm -hmm. for 2000 And then that night, he could not finish selling the ram. And normally what they would do is that they would refrigerate mm -hmm. the remaining so that the next day in mm -hmm. the evening, they start processing. This young man left in the morning and went to Navarongo. And to come back in the evening, his, there was light off. Wow. So the meat in the fridge it's spoiled. Them. spoiled. So that evening when we got there, the young man did not have meat to offer. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what is it? Mm -hmm. He said, Chief, this is what happened. That young man's capital is sunk. Lost. Mm. And I'm sure that there will be many other stories similar to this. Mm -hmm. That people have lost their, their entire capital. And then we are sitting down. Then you come and tell us that the problem is ECG. The problem is Greco. The problem is VRA. Where is the president of the Republic of Ghana that has taken responsibility to ensure that our lives are made better? Anyway, um, Dennis is also here, but let's not forget to go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all our quality gadgets. I'm talking about phone, I'm talking about laptops, I'm talking about uh, smart TV sets, I'm talking about the CCTV as well. Now the phones probably you are wondering, oh, what brands do they have? They have so many brands. They have Nokia, Samsung, they have the iPhones. I mean, no matter the... Do they have Huawei? They have, no, they don't have Huawei. They should that be was Huawei. saying. <laughs> okay, probably very soon, very soon. But, very but soon. Franco cannot use us to make money. <laughs> without giving us phones and the laptops so that we can test to they see whether promised, they promised they should deliver so, yeah they will deliver so franco will be giving us phones and laptops very soon don't worry at all franco will do that now if you want to contact franco you can call them on 024 642 2338 or 055-593-9311. 5939311. You can also download the app, which is on Google Play Store. It's Franco Trading, and that's the app, Franco Trading app. Just download the app onto your phone, and you know what? Just use it, and they'll serve you. You can also go on their um, website, which is www.francotradingenterprise.com, and get all the details that you are looking for. They are always at your doorstep, and they will serve you. Dennis. <laughs> Everybody's issue right now is a silence from the president and the vice president on this whole doomso issue. It looks like uh, blame is being shifted in a certain way. And uh, everybody's wondering why the president hasn't spoken as of now to let people know that 
he does understand that we are in, you know, doom of problems and probably is going to be fixed or is not going to be fixed. Something must be said. Because even with the energy minister, he didn't really address us. Somebody went to speak to him and he said, well, he feels the thing has been fixed. And so if you want to fix your timetable, fix it yourself. So, Dennis. But before that, you have a work, right? Yes. We'll talk about... Okay. So I would, I would want to touch on two small issues before let's, I... Let's let's talk into this one, and then we can talk about the work because I think NDC also had a walk over the weekend. Yeah, massive walk. Okay, massive don't worry, we'll talk about it. So let's talk about our main topic, and then we we'll talk about as the work to the later. determination of its massiveness. I think <laughs> <laughs> more... <laughs> the are there. Uh, we'll anyway, that alone. but before I get into the energy um, matter, over the weekend, the former minister for finance was speaking. <coughs> Sorry, um, uh, Mr. Tepe. Mm. Um, he touched on a couple of things, but uh, within the next few seconds, I would want to slightly comment on the educational ones. For me, educational matters are quite sensitive mm. issues, and these are some of the things we pre we've represented all our lives. Mm -hmm. And then the minister, the former minister, was speaking to the issue of one, mm -hmm. uh, their, their three months pay policy, and he spoke to the issue of teacher and nursing allowances. But I would want to clear this erroneous impression um, about the three months pay policy. He admits that the issue they had with the three months pay policy of John Dramani Mahama is that the time for getting the data of appointed teachers to the time of payment was quite an extensive time. So they could not pay and had to do what he calls salary arrears for people who had been working for two years. I think that Mr. Setepe ought to cut Ghanaian some slack when it comes to issues of education. Some of us are quite emotional about you, it. You, you know what? I'll get there. I'll, I'll come there to is, I just want to clear this. I, I wish I had the time to delve into I that would, particular I would, conversation. I would come to the next issue. So what, what I'm going to do is that we'll bring this topic probably next week when you come in, and then we'll delve into it. No, no, no. Else, no, no. no, no. Next week we'll let his senior come. <laughs> no, so no, no, no. The no point, so, 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 that, else, if we don't stick that, to our topic, see, we don't have see, time. You see, unfortunately, this is life television. That's the challenge. So the please. challenge is that when we have, Mona was speaking, he mm. spoke about can I use the best phone now? That was a lot. Uh, no, no, that was, that that was, was because intro. I came. That was, I that was when I came no, early. No, no, How can you come to do my own? Sorry, Dennis. I'm sorry. The fact is that you allowed him speak about something I'm, that is unrelated I'm, to the I'm, subject. I'm, I'm sorry. But you, are, you have a problem. But that, oh, don't that worry. didn't have to don't do worry. with Don't worry. With, with, I, with I just topic. wanted to be clear that it didn't have anything the issues, to do with no. the issues. Please, let's hold talk on. about it. Philemon, hold on. Yeah. Uh, you, we have so, a full so, dose so you have to deal with today, so, so don't run. So, so you see, Rosalie, let, let, me, let me explain. Is, let me talk, please. Let me explain this let me to you. Talk. Oh, yeah, let you are still taking my time. No, no, I'll let you talk. Don't worry. I would have finished clearing the issue by now. I'll let you talk. I want you to understand something. When we start a show, we have time for intros. The intros are the times that you get the opportunity to speak about things. Now, Bernard got, that was his intro. That was way before we even started. I'll you. let you talk, don't worry. That was when, before we even delved into our topic. And immediately we delved into the topic, Bernard didn't have the opportunity to speak about that. Same with Philemon. When we delve into our topic, we go straight into our topic. So probably- Thank you very much. I will speak to the issues yes, of please. the Thank power. Thank you very much. I, I, I just wanted it to be clear that you did not allow me to have an intro. You used <coughs> two minutes of that same but time you came late. to- uh, you came late. Philemon, 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 there's one thing about me. Uh, when, Dennis, I, when I'm here, Dennis, oh, no, 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 no. I will never. Dennis, no, the point is that Philemon, please let him speak. Respect, respect. Dennis, please make your respect. <laughs> Look how you're saying. Who is talking about Dennis, respect? You're the one that comes late. Philemon, Philemon. You come late for a show. Philemon, please let let him speak. Yes. <laughs> Dennis, please go ahead. Dennis, please go ahead. Make your point. So, uh, like I mentioned, you've used two minutes of my time to prevent me from speaking to a very sensitive issue that is dear to my heart. But then the issue of uh, power generation, I would be a very big liar that I'd come and sit here in any way and attempt to behave as though when the power, is go the power goes off, my house is selected that Dennis is an MPP man, so we won't put out his light. I think that just like every time when I sit here, I call, I call for fairness, even in the treatment of panels, it is only fair that I admit that it is not something that is good for all of us. But today, Glory be to God that people like him, Philemon, and people like Bernard Mona sit here and has, have the moral credence to attempt to attack this government for terms of our electricity crisis. That is why I'm saying glory be to God. Because quickly they all forget that their, their darling government subjected this country to years 
of energy crisis. But I have said that the MPP has a very high standard when it comes to governance. That in no way should we attempt to justify or equalize with NDC. They are never the standard. So whereas our three months or two months of energy crisis is unpardonable to Ghanaians, they are free to have four years or even eight years or how many years they want to put Ghanaians into darkness. That is the standard of the NDC. The NDC standard is failure, low sinking mentality and a deficit of credibility. That is the NDC standard. So I, as a person who believes in, in the strength of our energy sector, will sit here and call on our government to expedite actions to solve them so, or solve the energy crisis. And we should never, no MPP communicator should attempt to compare or leverage or standardize us to the NDC because this, again, is a failure and sinking thought. That's a fact. So I think that it is right for every well-meaning Ghanaian to call on government to solve the energy crisis. Man, now let's get into the matters. I think that uh, uh, Mr. Benan Mona should be fair to President Kofo. When President Kofo was leaving government, he left an installed capacity that was necessary or enough to cover our, de our demand, even at peak. It is also not true that President Kofo did not add a single generation uh, megawatt to our energy sector. It is a it is blatant lie, it is falsehood, but I don't, I'm not surprised it's coming from Mr. Bernard Mona. Because his darling, John Mahama, put Ghanaians in power crisis for four years. How is he his <coughs> How is he his darling? I didn't say he's in this. I said he's darling. But how is he his darling? He can, he can say he's not his darling when he's speaking. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. When President Kofu, in 2007, <laughs> 126 megawatt was added with the cuts that we were, were brought into this country. He can call them whatever names he wants to call them. But the fact remains that even in, uh, on the point of exiting power, President Kufo was adding on. Now let's take the, 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 the track record of President Kufo again. This is a man who thought into the future, said that though our current situation is enough, let me st uh, start with power. And you come here, sit here, and attempt to bastardize the record of President Kufo and give you no iota of credit for all he did for our energy sector. But you sit here and eulogize John Dramani Mahama, who watched on, sat on, and allowed Ghanaians to sleep in darkness for four years. Did you hear him talk about Rollins? I'm coming. I, I didn't even get that. I'm, I'm did taking you, Did you hear him talk about Samuel? He spoke about Rollins. He spoke about everybody. I'm dealing with President Kofo. Allow me to do that. No, no, I'm just asking a question. He spoke about Mills. Yes, I he heard that. He spoke about Rollins. And so why are you eliminating these I two and you are Nkrumah. actually... He spoke about Nkrumah. Why are you eliminating all these <laughs> and you are attacking just one? <laughs> Rollins, I, I, I'm not sure MPP sent me here to come and defend Rollins. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm I'm not, not sure. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm Rosalind, you've, al, you've asked me a question. I'm coming. Uh -huh. I'm not here to defend Atamos. He's, he's put out factual inaccuracies. Mm -hmm. No, you actually... I'm you, coming. Rosalind, no, you no, don't no, allow no. me to talk. It's not I don't allow you to talk. I think you don't understand me. Your point or your delivery that you made mentioned John Dramani Mahama. Why are you not mentioning Atta Mills? Why are you not mentioning Nkrumah? Why are you not mentioning Rollins? You mentioned John Dramani Mahama. Can so I, you, should, you should mention can I, all. Can I continue? Yes, continue, but mention all. Be How, fair. Can continue. I continue. Yes. I think that the, 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 the matter is that as much as it is against two John, John Mahama darling boys, that's not mean you should add to my words today, I beg. Allow me flow. How, how is it? How is it? How, how is PNC John Dramani Mahama's darling? Isn't he? But did he mention? He should, de she, should deny it. No, John but you, should, you see, <laughs> that, that Rosalie, is, Rosalie, fair, Rosalie, yeah. you allow me speak, and you do not allow me flow. You see, this is I not do, fair. And not, I'm saying it again. It's not fair. Allow not, me flow. It, no, uh, you see, I will allow you, you flow if you do not attack one. Let's go uh, straight to the how point. How do you then pick and choose who you want as you speak on? Because you are... And I'm not even done. No, because you are actually you saying somebody, somebody here, is somebody's no, darling boy. When a person Rosie. actually went in to talk about other people, go to the other people. If you are going to talk about what he said, deal with what he said. Don't deal with one. Rosalind, the banking of your table will not change the facts. Exactly. So speak the facts. Let's go. You are struggling. I'm not struggling. You are struggling. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. The fact is that I am saying that he sat here, attacked the record of President Kofor in a falsehood manner. And that's the fact. Okay. He came here, elogized John Dramani Mahama in a way that he ought to have known better. And Philip Monlau to do the same thing. And if you have a problem that I address the issues they, they raise, then so be it. I continue. No, but he didn't eulogize Mills. He didn't eulogize Wallace. He didn't eulogize, Wallace. He didn't eulogize Nkrumah. You have a problem that I am not defending Atamos. No, I'm not 
see you I, should be How do you do that? Why, why? How do you host a show like Continue. this? Continue. How do you be flow? I, how do I host a show? This is this You is are not show. allowing me to talk. I'm not allowing you to talk? When I talk, you then tell me that I should come make, and make defend your Atta Mills. Make your point. How is this fair? Nobody said you should defend Atta Mills. Oh. Make your point. So I am saying that you do not come and sit here and attempt to paint John Dramani Mahama to Ghanaians as a saint. John Dramani Mahama's record is a four-year streak of doom so. That is the fact. Nana Dujan Kwekufuado and his government have a problem to deal with. And I admit, just like uh, uh, power sector players have admitted, that you cannot continue in this situation of energy crisis. And I am saying that the MPP have a responsibility that we do not never attempt to equalize with the NDC because this is one of a sinking deficit. That is all I have to say. Now I move to Ben Boache's statement. Ben Boache, earlier on, some few weeks ago, mentioned that the problem of the current problem is a matter of inefficiencies. Then, then the same Ben Boache comes again to say that there is a deficit. Where is the consistency? Now let's move on to what the data says. If you read Ghana's master, uh, en uh, the energy sector uh, master plan or strategy by Energy Commission, it tells you clearly that we do not have a generational problem. There are two main sides of what we're dealing with here when it comes to the energy sector. There is a running of the sector and there is a generational capacity. The now John Kwekufuado's government has attempted to tackle all two within the short, short and long term. Let me first take the generational issue. Considering the fact that we have capacity enough to supply the Ghanaian people, the now Kwekufuado thinks into the future and says that, let us start Pua Luguda. And Pua Lugu is started. Now, it comes to the inefficiencies of the sector or the challenges in the sector. Dealing with the challenges in the sector, he says that the only way to clear the inefficiencies is by employing digital methods in the, in the distribution and the mobilization of our revenue. Then he brings the ECG up. I am not in any way saying that it's been a perfect ride for Anadu Danko Kufuado. And nobody is saying that the president has run away from responsibility. And if you talk about John Dramani Mohammed's effort in, 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 in dealing with the crisis of doom so, you cannot in any way tell me that because he came out to speak, and that for that matter he did something about it. That is, that is a deficit in, in, in logic. Why am I saying this? Now, now the Kweku Kufuado's period has, or the energy situation has spanned less than three months. Less than three months. You are equating it to something that spent four years and that got the president to speak because it became a national crisis of, 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 of a huge magnitude. And then I heard him speak about the issue of uh, trying to trivialize the issue of Russia-Ukraine. You talk about energy and you trivialize the issue of Russia-Ukraine. I'm talking about Philemon Law. How do you do that? That it's been overflowed. Okay, it's an excuse that's been overflowed. Give me one excuse that you have to have run this country to the ground. The MPP is using Russia-Ukraine and pandemic, right? A, a, a recession that is never seen since 1930. Now you give me a single excuse that John Dramani Mahama has to have run this country afoot or to the ground. I have said it several, and I'll say it right here again. Now the issues that we have to deal with in the energy sector has no particular, and I would be a big liar to attempt to uh, behave like as though it does not exist. We face a challenge, and it's been a, a challenge that we've confronted head on. Now, over the weekend, we have ECG telling us that the crisis is being solved. In less than a week, not to even observe what, as though whether the ECG is saying is right or wrong. You sit here on national television and attempt to tell us that ECG is a liar without any iota of, uh, of evidence. All right, we have, I, we have some comments coming in. Hi, beautiful, you're welcome back. I hope now your throat is okay. In fact, Rosalind, this government is just paying for their sins against JM. The only phrase JM left to them is, was simply posterity will be the judge. And here we are. Everything they used against JM, they have done worse than that. From dollar corruption, inflation, security mismanagement, and now doom. So if I were to be Nanado, this would have been the time to put arrogance aside and apologize to JM by saying, dear JM, I'm sorry when you told me I've never been president before. I thought it was an insult, but now I understand it better. Please forgive me, Master Raman Tuna Sola. So I actually read this one because, you see, with what you were saying, you were saying that, uh, you know, the president speaking. About, you see, people are calling on the president to speak. Do you think the president should Rosalind, speak? Rosalind, I don't think that it is wrong for anybody to call on the president to speak. He's the president of the republic. But when an issue comes and it is less than the three months or it's, it's in its early phases, agencies are working on it. ECG is talking. Uh, the minister for energy is talking. 
uh, Grico is talking, we've not exhausted at least the first phases of it, then we jump to call the president to speak. I don't have a, these are these are rights of citizens. Yes. But I believe that it is too quick in the time to expect the president to speak. Okay. Especially in the situation when the sector players and the managers of the sector, the first direct managers, have told you that we have been able to put our feet on the ground and we've solved the problem. It's not up to a week since ECG said they've, they've solved, solved the problem. They've solved the problem. In my area, wager, over the weekend, I had light go out, but it was less than two hours. Okay, so for me... So, I'm, 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 okay. I'm coming on that. So, I admit that the power, the power went off, but I also admit that it is not as compared to before the EC, ECG released that statement that they've solved the problem. Okay, so for me, when ECG released the statement, I think the statement came out on Thursday or so, right? Yeah. I experienced power outage from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m., and then on Friday, again, 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., and then on Saturday again. So then I ask myself, has a problem been solved? So, Rosalind, I perfectly agree and understand you. All I'm saying is that to be able to call ECG liars or to be able to say that what ECG is saying is not true, at least you allow a time frame of observation. Because here we have people saying their lights have not gone off, we have people saying their lights have gone off. We have a time frame, we observe it, and then we're able to present but data why can't that you... says that no, ECG, what you said, it's not true. But why can't you solve the problem? We don't experience it at all, and then you come and tell us it's solved. That is when you no, tell ECG, us it's solved. Mm, but if I'm experiencing it and you tell me that it's solved, I mean, under normal circumstances, common sense will tell you that it's not solved. Rosalind, common sense too will tell you that we have demanded ECG speaks to us. That is also common sense. Uh, common sense also says that uh, once you've requested that they speak to us and communicate to us, Whatever step of the way, they will communicate. But do you know that there's PR? Now, now, there's PR. I'm, and I'm, with regards to PR, we, we actually solve problems. We, 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 we make problems look good. Rosalind, with, with so now PR. just oppose So your, that is what it just, is. Now just oppose okay. just oppose your common sense demand of communication to your common sense demand of not talking. No, but you talk and speak to the facts, speak to the truth. And that is what they've done. No, solve the problem before you talk about it. So anyway, how let's, do you let's then continue. Now justify let's that continue you... our messages coming. And good morning, Easter celebrations in Ghana are not just a time of religious significance, but also offer uh, valuable moral lessons and hold great importance with Ghanaian society. The message of sacrifice, hope, unity, and renewal that Easter conveys resonates deeply with Ghanaians and serves as a reminder of the values that are cherished in Ghanaian culture. The Easter celebrations provide an opportunity for Ghanaians to come together, celebrate their faith and heritage, and reflect on the role of Christianity in shaping their society. Easter in Ghana is a time of joy, reflection, and community, and it, come, it, and it continues to play a significant role in the lives of Ghanaians. Aaron Bevako Koko, Mr. Happy Easter to everyone, every staff of Joy Prime. Hmm, Baumia doesn't have any moral right to question John Mahama. Why is the track record of Baumia? What is the track record of Baumia? Sorry, John Mahama built community day schools, U House, at Ho Hospitals and Chip Compounds, uh, Cape Coast Sports Stadium and Cape Coast Market, etc. If you're Ghanaian and you know very well you are suffering under 80 years precedent, then let's vote them out. Oh, 80 years. Okay. Good morning to uh, Dogbega and your name at Passport Office, Abochi Philip Keita. Good morning, Roslyn. And your honorable panelists, as for this MPP uh, government, they see Ghanaian problems not to be their problem. Citizens are feeling the power outages across the country. And for us to wake up to uh, hear from our energy minister saying that Ghanaians should prepare their own timetable. Ah, but how irresponsible and arrogant minister is he? How does he take us for granted? He should not uh, vi try to vie for a vice president for his party because the people of Ghana that he doesn't respect will respond to him and their party power. All right, I'm trying to read these ones. One second. Okay, so Honorable Akisma says, I'm disappointed. Oh, why am I? Okay. I'm disappointed totally on Baumia and President Kufado government. These same people were telling us that John Mahama brought too much power... Uh, which will be a waste. Today, these same people are crying of shortage of power. I can only say Ghana wasted all these eight years of Jack Toronto government. We are seeing the lights going on and off every day, and you are telling me that Doomso is not back. By the way, what is the meaning of Doomso? Is it not the on and off electricity? Why? So why are they denying it when we experience it da daily? The day that the frog will die is when we'll see how long or tall it was. Honorable Akisme Bekwai, Madam Hose, the power outages going on in the country is very unsettling and the Kufado's government should not be allowed to have their own rendition to the power outages to deceive Ghanaians. That is not doomed. So during Mohammed's era, Mohammed's name was mentioned for he not being 
or for him being the cause of power outages, but Mahama resolved the problem before he left power and was or is being blamed for bringing excess power than what Ghana needed, unlike Ufor, who sent pastors to Akosombo Dam to pray instead of giving pragmatic solutions. Madam Post, I am not an NDC member or sympathizer, but I want to be brutally frank with the monumentally failed Ecuador's government. Good morning to you, your panelist, Charles Echampo. All right, Charles. Good morning to you, Madam, and to your guests. Madam Ghania should expect more hardship, not only on electricity, but on all aspects of our lives. All the money needed to run the various sectors of the economy have been diverted into people's personal account. But I believe Ghanaians will vote wisely come 7 December 2024. My regards to incoming MP for Myung, Alaji Ms. Bao. Good morning, Roslyn. Um, wishing you and the entire group of Joy Prime a happy Easter. Thank you so much. Let me use this opportunity this morning to tell Dr. Baumi as a matter of agency to stop insulting the intelligence of Ghanaians and credit us with the little respect we deserve in this country. But I'm happy Ghanaians are now wild awake and can read in between the lines. Dr. Baumi is out here telling Ghanaians that he voted into power. He's going to He's going to grant businessmen and women tax amnesty, meaning Dr. Baumia is simply telling Ghanaians to stop paying taxes and wait for him to come to power and grant them the tax amnesty. With this, I can say Dr. Baumia is the enemy of progress of this country. Dr. Baumia is also out there promising to cancel a lot of taxes under the, this country, which he is part of and the head of the economic management team. Today he's out here saying when voted to power, they will put a stop to the burning of excavators. Where is the 500 excavators that were seized and kept under the supervision of the national security? The future excavators, the future of Ghana under the super incompetent and wicked government is pregnant and hopeless. Bernard, I think there's a message to you. <laughs> says, uh, good morning, greetings to Dennis. Tell him God has a big plan for him, just to say, Neem. tell Bernard Mona to stop looking at Dennis because what Dennis is talking is making sense. <sighs> okay, says, I'm not, okay, says, host, you are not being fair to MPP guy. Allow my handsome guy to flow. The guy is putting out facts. Why do you have problem with that? You allow Bernard to flow even when he was lying. Was he lying? Well, um, there's actually, uh, we'll, we'll try and get to the portal for you if he was lying. We'll see if it's lie or not. You allow Bernard to flow. You didn't see the need to correct him. And now you are distracting my brother. Why? Well, uh, Matuk, I didn't distract him. We just needed a fax on the ground. That's the most important thing. Give us the fax and we are good to go. Um... <laughs> All right, let me see what do, um, Sometimes it's funny how our leaders are behaving, thinking we have eyes and can't see and ears and we can't hear and mouths can't talk as they are, but it's the opposite. Even the little ones knows what's happening. Seriously, as President Anado, driver and Baumia mates, never won elections in Ghana 2016 and 2020 as Sembeba. Seb, sebe, asem, sebe. Okay, happy holiday to you, Roslyn. Uh, good morning to you, Roslyn. You see the problem I'm having with some of these uh, young guys, they are being... They be so politicians instead of talking Ghanaian. The NPP communicator is talking as a politician, but not as a Ghanaian. Way back 1996 in Kumasi Academy, we have pay and buy generator for the school. So was Mahama the government by them? Hmm, Ghana is in trouble. Okay, I'm trying to get... Um, good morning, Madam Host. Please, as the NPP rep, at that, what point did the president start addressing the nation on the issue of COVID? <laughs> Dennis, should I ask you that or I should go? <laughs> I wouldn't want to speak to you. Uh, uh, mm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not speaking. Yeah, not speaking Someone soon. is calling me to... Uh, oh, it's a question. Speak to, speak to the issue <laughs> so of you're saying that this one, you're saying that this one is, too, is too early for the president to speak. It's only so, three I mean, months. So I'm the saying is too early. All I'm saying is that people are dealing with it. They said they are dealing with it. Okay. It is, unlike COVID. COVID how how we had the Minister of Information also talk about speak, it all the how time. Do you so a pandemic. It looks like most of us uh, belittle COVID. Mm. Uh, well, let me leave it. We should leave it here. Okay. Good morning, yeah. Madam Bambi. I think he can lie us again. We are waiting for him. You keep on understanding, host, but refuse, okay? Refusing here at the same time. Um, <laughs> he's, he's okay. It's okay. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, good morning, Rosalie. I watch this program from England as much as I can, but I'm always amazed by the audacity of the MPP communicators. We are all living through this history, but MPP want to write a different history. Dumso started with President Kofor, not President Mahama. I think President Mahama was wrong to let Dumso go on for so long, but for us to go back to Dumso again in 2023 to 2024 is unpardonable, and MPP will not even accept the problem. Okay, good morning, Rosalie. Your political color is showing, okay? I mean, I don't go to. <laughs> Over the last two weeks, I've observed you heckle every MPP communicator and prevented them from flowing on their presentation. Please take steps to balance the program. Okay, but for your information, I also get people sending me messages telling me that I am MPP. So right now, I don't even know the party I belong to. I really don't know. Rose, I like the way you handle the show, irrespective of their political affiliation. You stand firm to prevent personal attacks. Then it's the, the sweat, giddy giddy, God bless Ghana. Okay, so this one says, uh, Madam Host, good morning. Please tell this young NPP man if you remember these two ministers. Oh, Kwame Nkrumah Ghana from Moses Lagos. Today, this young man is defending such impunity and arrogance of this party called Doom. What's it? Dooman, not, okay, Doom so not MPP or NDC. I'm a Ghanaian. Okay, so you are not an MPP or NDC. Okay, a technical fault that can't be resolved within 24 to 72 hours doesn't meet the definition of technical fault. It defeats techno technical logic. Simon Babrugu. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think I've read almost all the messages. Let's see. You. Um, I'll come back to these ones to read them. So I think Philemon, yeah. let me come to you because <laughs> this, this time round you're on the floor. We have barely like 10 minutes to go. So let's quickly. Oh, we're not going to that. that. Uh, it just we'll, 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 okay, let's, let's just go into the No, but you see, let me, you see, it's very important. Just, just yes, probably three minutes, minutes and then we can I, go into the just a matter. Yeah. I listened to Dennis and I tried to make a head and tail of his arguments. If indeed he was listening to the points we made before he came in late, he would have realized that the point we are making is that the NDC, under the leadership of John Mahama, was able to move the generation capacity of Ghana from whatever it was cumulatively from um, Nkrumah to the military leaders, down to Rawlings for Mills. And this was able to get us to 5,134 megawatts. That's what the NDC handed over to the MPP. Mm. The question I'm throwing to him, what, is the gen what have you added to the, MP to, to the, to the energy, uh, to the installed capacity of Ghana? What have you added? As of now, the NDC left 5,134. What have you added? Okay. Okay. Resilient. Now we go wow. in. So, we go, so you said two minutes. We are done. I am uh, saying, no, I've not even made I'm just asking no, no, the question to you. But it's two minutes. Answer now. You actually. The installed capacity is 5,134. Okay. So and that is where the NDC left it off. What is your record? All right. Now we go into Resilient. our what is your matter. Record? Let's go into the Jusso matter uh, where no, there's a by elections that's about that's to happen. Listen, but then before, before the by elections, there's a, press, a primary that's going on. Two pictures have popped up so far. We have uh, the former boss of GFA, that's Christina Sechi, who is all going for, uh, you know, the primary on the ticket of the NPP. And we have Abronye, Mrs. Abronye, also going on the ticket of the NPP. For now, we don't know who will be represent the NPP for the by-elections, but um, I'm wondering who it's going to go for. It's actually caused a big stir on social media for these two to be uh, contesting this seat. We don't know, but um, let Philemon, I'm coming back to you to start with then, you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, none. The, ND, ND, the NPP has added nothing to the installed generation capacity of power in this country. In their, this is their eighth year. Mm. In their eighth year in government, they have added not even one kilowatt, megawatt. Not even one. I think that you just should be fair to the people of this country. The NDC established ESLA, which is the energy sector levy. And we left in place over 24 billion. This government inherited 24 billion from ESLA. They have dissipated the port of ESLA. And today, they are even in debt. The wisdom behind what John Mahama did or well, let's put in place a levy that would cushion the energy sector, that when we even owe power producers, IPPs, we're able to depend on this particular one to pay. So that, you're, you're, you are taking all the time for the EGISO, so, so if I take... A oh, you mean that all of that community for three minutes? Yeah, because I have... Let me, to let me land on this one. Let me, land, let me land on this one. So the point is that the money of 224, that we, 24 billion that we left, they have expended it. ESLA, they increased it even to 30% as we speak. And as of now, they have nothing in ESLA. If you have money, pay the independent power producers because they have come out to say you owe them. You are not paying them. And because you are not paying them, they will not give you power. It's as simple as that. 
If you claim you have any superior record on energy, why are you not paying the independent power producers? If you were paying them, we would have power. If you had added any megawatt of power to the national part, to the installed capacity of Ghana, we would not be in doom so. All right. So I think that, be fair, be honest to the people of Ghana. You're a young man. I believe that you have prospects in the politics of this country. Don't follow the likes of Napo. Don't be arrogant. Please, please, please. He's not arrogant. Be truthful no, to the people of this country. He's not arrogant. I don't think. sit here on the ticket of a political Dennis party and arrogant. all you do. No, no, please. Don't, don't sit here on the ticket of a political party and all you do is to defend the no, incompetence you, and recklessness you, of the government. But you see... Now I, on the issue of a wait, I want us to be very fair here. <laughs> he's not arrogant. So when you say this... I you said do that, don't follow the footsteps of Napo. To be arrogant. Yes, he's don't follow. Arrogant. Don't follow. Please. Don't follow. I Don't be was, like Napo. I think, I think it was a need Napo to... arrogantly spoke to the people but of this I country. Think it was a need to... I think the way you are defending but your government's let's, record let's on energy, the, uh, I think that you have to be fair. You have to be honest. You have to be compassionate. Fair enough, but that you have to put yourself in the show of the Ghanaian people. Fair enough. We know some of you have energy plants in your houses. Nah. We know some of you can afford Please, to pay you don't for know energy. That for a fact. But the common people no, of this country Philemon, do not have that. Philemon, we don't know that. Respect the people of Ghana. We do not know that for a fact. I am telling you that people in power don't pay for energy. Like the people in my village and Madina, Adenta, other parts of Accra. Pay for energy. Philemon. Some of you have energy in your no, no, homes. Please, uh, Ejiso issues. On the issue of Ejiso. No, no, no. no, but, is, no, no, no I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rosalind, no, no, no. Um, Rosalind, no, you are not being fair to me. You are not being fair to me, Rosalind. Uh, On the issue of Ejiso. No, if no, the chairman no, can give me just Philemon. 30 seconds of your time. No. On the issue of Ejiso, no. chairman, give me 30 seconds. Let Bernard, you're on the floor. First, let me. Rosalind, you're not being fair to me. You're not being fair to me, Rosalind. To. Someone passes a lot of comments like this, and you don't give me an opportunity to refute. Oh, we don't have. You don't do that. that please, unfortunately. So the tirades. Say a lot of untruths here. The highest. Dennis. But clearly, the attacks were unwarranted. Unwarranted. Philip, can you let Bernard talk? The personalization of the issues were not justified in any form. There is no doubt in my mind that I spoke as a nationalist taking us through the history of our energy creation and the energy problem. If it hits you so hard, I cannot help you. Mm -hmm. For you to credit me to a John Mahama that I'll be contesting in 2024, that I want to be president and he wants to be president, can only be the figment of your imagination. But I leave that for you. First, I think that the two persons that you've just put to their posters are both lawyers. Mm. John Kuma was a lawyer. This is from your chairman. John Kuma was a lawyer. I'm being disrupted. Please, get up. John Kuma was a lawyer as well. The circumstances of this by-elections causes a lot of pain, particularly amongst many young people. Mm. In 2003, my, myself, John Kuma, Omane Buama, and Ernest were the candidates for Newt's presidency at the KNUST, which led to Omane Buama winning as president of Newt. The rest of us have not shown any slip in our political aspirations. John Kuma has become one, or became one, of a prominent member of the New Patriotic Party, <clears throat> just as uh, Omane Buama became prominent in the National Democratic Congress. You cannot subsume my place within the People's National Convention. So it tells you that there was a caliber of people that wanted to lead the Students' Front of this country, and on, nobody doubts the problems that John, uh, uh, Omane Buama had with government when it had to come to student issues. Despite that he was an MPP Cadbury member at the time, he decided to take students' issues to the fore. Kwesi Nyanteche is a brother. You know that he's a brother. Oh, is it? I oh, you know. don't know? No. Kwesi Nyanteche, we grew up knowing him in Wa as our brother. Oh. So he's our big brother. Okay. And the Wali that Kwesinyan Techi can speak, I cannot speak it. Mm. He speaks fluent Wali interlaced with all the proverbs that you can find, just as Maxwell Kofi Konedu. 
and then Mr. Udru. I mean, they grew up, they lived in Wa, they did everything. So, I wish him well. I wish I can support him in his campaign. But it comes at a very, um, from GFA president <clears throat> to... With controversy. Yeah, to constituency leadership. I, I want to look at it, which one was bigger. And sometimes when you reach the peak and you lower the bar, it doesn't add up. I think that being the GFA president, being a member of CAF, and going all the way to FIFA, he had to reach a certain level. Do you understand? Mm. And I would have thought that, hey, if for some reasons that image had come down, going down to constituency level, but probably that is a way to resurrect himself. Okay. So, bro, I wish you well. Mm. If I can come to a Jusu. <laughs> you but go, you I think my, no, my party is putting up a candidate. Lucy is okay. contesting. Okay. And so I cannot support him. Okay. All right, Dennis. <clears throat> I think that Philemon asks quite a simple question. Dennis, if you go too much into it, we'll have to cut you. I don't uh, say I'm uh, not being uh, uh, <laughs> My body make use to that. So this is the Integrated Power Sector Plan of Ghana by the Energy Commission. It says that our current generation capacity is 5,336. He says they left us 5,134. The difference, he should tell me who added it. Two. So in, you added what, 100 and something? I'm coming. He says we didn't add a single one. So you added 100 and something in eight years? In in June so last year. <laughs> Rosa, you know the reason why everybody feels that you, you are another panelist. You know why everybody feels you are another panelist? Do you know why everybody feels you are another panelist? The young man asks a simple question. That I should tell him one. And I have told him that. Maybe he added that difference. Maybe he did. Secondly, in June last year, the solar plant that was uh, solar panel, floating solar panel, that was commissioned by the Greek Power Authority. How many did they add? When they didn't have the opportunity, they bulldoze their way with so much strength, forgetting <laughs> that they are the connoisseurs of doom so. Oh. But I have said this, that mm. Philemon La and your cohort, you take this from me. Mm. The MPP can never standardize or equalize ourselves with you when it comes to the energy sector. We have a standard to do better. Mm -hmm. And so that is what every MPP person in government must focus on. And that is the nationalistic me talking, yeah. telling us that we should do better and fix it as soon as possible. I've responded to your issue of power generation, so you may want to respond back. No, but, no nobody's responding back about But that. Oh, I want to clear this. No, 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 no. I want There's to clear no this. Nothing is happening, Paul. I want to clear this. Nothing is happening. Please, Philemon, he's on the phone. Eight years. He said I should respond. Philemon, no. He asked me to respond. No. He invited me. No. He's not the host of the show. Oh, <laughs> he's not the host of the show. What a shameless government. Dennis. Please. Shameless MPP government. De uh, no, no. Well, of course. Philemon, we are not doing If in eight years you are... No, you are, Philemon, we you are not... You sit on TV Philemon. and say your record is Philemon. Oh, a few megawatts. Philemon, hey. we are not MPP. doing this. You see, the reason why Philemon and his likes Make like lying a lot is that I've proven to him that... Did you hear that? Indeed, one, the one he mentioned, Did you hear I've shown him. Please. Two, the personalization and insulting of ministers lying. here... Lying. Calling Philemon. them arrogant, hmm. interjecting and showing bravado. Where were you when we were in doing so? Where was the strength of a young man? Eight years, what is your record? None. Where was the strength of a young eight man? Eight years, what is your record? Who teaches you to interject? Eight years, in what is this? your record? Our trading enterprise has... Oh, no. Your record, is, uh, what is, is your record? record? Can you mute Rosie, me? What is your record? Rosie, I, I would, would you allow me to talk? About, I'll talk about Franco they trading have no enterprise record. for now. And, no record um, in energy. I don't blame you. You have a, you have a, you have a support. Now, you see what... Where you are taking it to. You but you I, I, you've not allowed me to talk. Rosalie, and she's defended and protected you. Rosalie, see where he's going to. Well, uh, I mean, your, your, your people are watching. Show some respect. This is what they call you. They, they sent you. A government communicator. Government communicator talking like this. Oh, my God. Anyway, so Franco Trading Enterprise has the best gadgets <laughs> for you. Um, if you're looking <laughs> for the best gadgets to Come. buy, Dennis, I'm... Um, let me say this, and I'll say it cloud and clear on Rosie, national this television. this is how you've been doing it. Dennis, 
This is how you If you don't want it. to come here, don't come again. If you think I'm like this, don't, don't want come me again. To come to, don't call me. If you think you if you think you don't like how if I moderate, you, don't come here again. Don't Let's continue. Don't call um, me. Franco Trading and to Franco to Trading Enterprise has the best gadgets for you. And so if you are looking for the best gadgets, go to Franco Trading Enterprise and get it. And um, make sure that when you go there, you don't pick your number from Google because they have the right numbers for you right here. Let me give you the numbers and the numbers here from Franco Trading Enterprise are 024 They have Nokia phones, Samsung phones, iPhones, Smart TVs. They also have tabletop fridges and Franco air conditioners as well. So just go to them and they'll serve. They actually have CCTVs. So uh, simple like that. Or you can download the app. That's Franco Trading app on your phone. Or you can go on their website, www.francotrading.com. And you just make sure that, you know, ask all the questions there. Franco Trading Enterprise. Still full, pa 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 fee. Philemon. On a just a quick one. I think the MPP has a pension of fielding discredited candidates. You know one of the members in Baumia campaign team? It's a certain man called Maxwell Opokwadu, former director of the Ghana School of Law. This is a man who is on record to have illegally admitted students who did not even write entrance exam into the Ghana School of Law. They have fielded this man as a campaign who? team member. Who? Of yeah. Maxwell Opokwadu, former director of the law. But school. how has that got to now, do with the issue of Ejiso? Yeah, but you are another, so you see, another discredited listen, candidate. Let, let, wait. Another discredited Philemon, candidate. Philemon, Philemon. The person of Christian Yantich. Wait. Someone who has been asked from the GFA. Ge gentlemen, let me. Calf because of his complicity in Philemon. corruption. Philemon, your, is your mic MPP is off, them? actually, so wait. <laughs> He's been off for a long you. time. <laughs> gentlemen, facts on this show, and we actually have some depth from here. I'm going to address point. every right. single one this, of you I on the show. Wait, no, you, no, you no, talk. I haven't finished You talk. Point. Gentlemen, decrum here. We speak to facts. We don't attack personalities here. Absolutely. And please, Philemon, do not attack anybody's personality. Dennis, do not attack anybody's personality. Bernard does not attack personalities, and that's why I'm not involving him here. He's <laughs> been here. Please. Please, oh. Dennis. How do you bring not, me into Dennis, something that he did? Dennis, this is not the first time, and I'm speaking about it. You come here you and you discredit me as the host of the show. Why are you attacking me? What do I do? I don't attack you. I ask you you questions. You and do. So please and please again. Today you join when me in ridiculing what I was saying. When you come here, we speak to you. He's speaking, I'm not speaking. And you now bring me in. Dennis, have I attacked anybody's Dennis, personality? Let me speak, please. Let me speak. Give me the decrum here. Oh. I am the host of the show. Oh, give you me are. The you so are. give me the decrum. Thank you very much. <laughs> we do not disrespect anybody here. We speak to the topics. You'll be asked the questions. I ask on behalf of the people, and I will ask. I don't fear you. I don't fear anybody. <laughs> we will ask the questions as to what it is. Please. Really? Thank so you. So, what have much. I done? Thank you. So, gentlemen, your Bernard. final points before we go. Um, I'll start with you, Bernard. Let Bernard um, do his points, and then we all take everybody's points. You Thank take Philemon again. Uh, well, well, I think that as I already said, um, Kwesinyan Techi is a brother. More importantly, and he's going for a contest. So far, it is the New Patriotic Party that has put up a date for their primaries. The PNC, I'm not sure, will do primaries because we have always had Lucy contesting, and Lucy contested John Kuma. So it will be out of place for the party to want at this time to be filing for a new candidate. So we will certainly present Lucy. I am not sure who the National Democratic Congress will present. That is if they intend to participate in this election at all. And the other political parties, I'm told that there's an independent candidate who was a former MP that was uh, opposed by John Kuma. I will, Abronya, by some reason, you know that Abronya's roots, he's actually from Upper West as well. Oh. Yes, he's from Wa West. And so he became Bono Regional, Bono Ahafo, oh, okay. then Bono Regional Chairman. And today, his wife is also participating. So I would think that within the new patriotic party, it appears people with some roots to the Upper West region are the ones that are so far parading. We can wish them well. But sometimes the circumstances that leads to the by-elections, like I said, makes it impossible or difficult. 
Um, I don't know how the constitution of Ghana will look at it. But probably when a party has won the election. And look, in December, we'll be doing general elections, right? And when you go and contest this by elections, you win or you lose. Then in December, I will not say because you just contested the elections less than six or uh, less than eight months, there will not be an election. The elections will be reconducted. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it from that premise, it appears that um, we waste a lot of resources. And so I would want to look at it from a different perspective. That going forward, when we lose a candidate, and then it is less than a year to the next election, we should frame in such a way that whoever wins will carry yourself into the next parliament automatically without having to go through the very laborious and complex situation of contesting again in the main elections. Okay. But as it stands now, even if you win 2024 mm -hmm. December, you have to subject yourself again. When other people are preparing already now mm -hmm. for the 2024 elections, mm -hmm. you have to prepare for this by-election and re-prepare for okay. the 2024 elections, right. I don't think Thank that. you, Bernard. My Can sincere we... condolence to the family of John Kuma. And we hope that at the end of the day, justice will be meted out to them in the face of all of the accusations. But you see, on the issue of the election, uh, my point is that I am wondering why the MPP always would rely on discredited uh, individuals to stand them, to represent them. On the specific issue of John, uh, of uh, Christine Yantichi, this is a man that calf GFA, I mean, the fact that he was even taken out of office is symbolic, it's representative of the fact that but, he's discredited. But I don't do interjection, but on this matter, why should Nantechi take the flag? Nantechi only exposed mm. how if he has some people in his pocket, mm. right? Mm. Nantechi did not do anything untoward. Mm. And then that there way, was an expose. Yes, of and that, receiving money and all of that. But and, and then the at the end of the day, Nantechi has been crucified. Yeah. The courts are saying that Nantechi is vindicated. I personally, well, the I may be biased the because it comes from the upper west. The in, his matter in court is not over. But the point is that Nyantechi, as we speak, is someone who had to leave office on integrity issues. And this is someone that's going to file to represent the MPP in Ejiso. I was making the earlier point also about Maxwell Opoku Ajeman. This is a matter of fact. He himself put on Facebook. Mr. I'm just talking about the fact that MPP likes to utilize people whose integrity are, are discredited, are like Maxwell Opoku Ajeman. So the fact of the matter is that we wish them well. We wish them well. I can't help but join the chorus of my chief, the distinguished Bernard Mona, uh, that maybe we should reconsider the political scheming such that when it's a year, I agree on that score. But I think that... Uh, it will be difficult uh, filling in the MPP side the shoes of John Kuma. But the NDC will be fielding in a candidate. I believe that the party would communicate that effectively in the next few days. And we are committed. We are committed towards mounting a robust campaign and then uh, prosecuting a campaign and telling the people of the Ejiso and, and that this we are going to fight as hard as we can. Okay. On the issue of energy, we'll let the Ejiso farmer, all the pharmacists in Ejiso whose medicines are getting rotten, fish, uh, cold store people whose fish is getting rotten in their fridges, yeah. we'll tell them the MPP has failed you. Yeah, Those whose children go to school and they are not able to take, we'll tell them. Those who are important. They do, they, but oh, they don't know. There are several issues. We need to remind them. Otherwise, we have some government communicators yeah, who come and spew you. a lot of untruths. The fact of the matter is that the people of Ejiso will be reminded that this MPP government has been nothing but a monumental disaster. Okay. We are feeling it in our pockets. All right. Let, let, um, Dennis. Thank you very much, Rosalind. I think that the matter of Ejiso right. is nice. Um, I speak with it with quite it's an emotional nice squeeze because of my relationship with um, Senior Kuma. Um, it's difficult to fill the shoes of Senior. Uh, you see where he got to, his age and all of that. And the things he brought to the table as a politician and as a brain. Um, that notwithstanding, the politics goes on. So um, we are constrained by the constitutional structure and the legal architecture to um, conduct a by-election. Uh, these are names that have popped up. Oh, nominations will be open from 2nd to the 4th of April. So uh, within that period, people would have the That's opportunity. Tomorrow. Yes. Uh, people will have the opportunity to context. And then whoever becomes a parliamentary candidate of the party in Ejusso. Ejusso, there's not much to talk about. Ejusso people remember, uh, they, have, they still have memories of uh, the four years of the lies that they had to uh, do without. And so... If I still believe that we can't still tell them that because three months is still not enough. I mean, even if it's a day, 
That's not our track record. That's not what our standard is. So, but they still remember the four years of John Dramani Mama and the NDC. So it's not a problem if PNC and NDC feels a candidate. They should meet us at Ejusu. When they meet us, the people of Ejusu will give a verdict. At the end of the day, what I am expecting from our party is that we unite our front, we unite our cause in Ejusu. Rally behind whoever we are going to put out there as a candidate and ensure that the structures of the party works. If you've noticed something about the general secretary of the MPP now, that there's a strong connection to the democratic tenets and tra traditions of our party. So he, there is no way there's going to be any restrictions. He has said it. The forms are out. It is 35,000. If you're a young man, and, or if you're a woman, or you're a PWD, it is given to you at a 50% uh, structure. What that means is that there is a strong connection to our democratic tenants. And that is what the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party and the entire leadership of the New Patriotic Party has stood for in line with our tenants and our tradition. So at the end of the day, that is what you'll be seeing in just from tomorrow to the fourth. Beyond that, how the NDC or PNC feel the candidates is purely an internal mechanism. And I don't want to go into the credibility of whoever they are going to field. The people of Ejusa will have the right and would have the final say on who is credible or who is not credible. As to reminding the people of Ejusa that they've been put into lies out, it is also important that you remind them of the four years of the monumental failure of John Dramani Mama when it comes to energy situations All right, in this country. So, um, Peru, you have a work in Peru. Tell us about it. So, I, I think that the, uh, Philemon uh, described the NDC's work as a mighty one. Well, that's the verdict left to the people of Kohl. Kohl is an MPP enclave, so for me, I don't like to dwell so much on um, the numbers and the masses and the crowds you see. But I want to give special um, take to Nahayud Anabuache, lawyer Nahayud Anabuache, for the organizational prowess, and, uh, and Salam Mustafa, the national youth organizer of the MPP. If you look at the organizational structure of what happened in Kohl, the architecture, the, the numbers, the euphoria, it tells you one thing, that the people of this country appreciate the challenges we are going through as a people, but they do not and will never compare our history to our, our, our future. It's purely an election that is about going into the past of a crisis that was self-inflicted and as against a future of ideas, a future of a, of a country that we can build together in hope and in synergy. That is what the people of Kohl showed us. And that is what we are committed to. The NDC have a, a, a track record of throwing in lies, ag uh, agitating, making mountains out of molehills. But that is not for us to see. It is ours as a party to be united like we did in Kohl. And there is one significant thing that happened in Kohl. If you look at the way other flag bearer aspirants came together flanked our flag bearer and gave him the support that is needed to ensure that we go into this election in a united front. I have no doubt in my mind that the people of this country will look at this unity and remember that in the west of the west, even in our deepest of challenges, our track record in managing this country is still better. It's still way, way above that of the NDC. Philemon, uh, MDC had a walk over the weekend. Led by His Excellency John Dramani a very massive mammoth crowd that were out in their numbers, even in the supposed stronghold of the opposition, we are shaking the place, gigim, 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 by John Mahama. But I see one thing that uh, somebody said in Kweu was uh, Brian Echampong. I found his commentary in Kweu very, very needless. I wonder why, again, people like this are in government. Because how can you say that even if the NDC wins, you will not hand over? Who is Brian Echampong? Brian Echampong, who are you? Do you want us to look into how you built Rock City? Let the, let the MPP, people like Brian Echampo and all these people who feel that power is this, that the people of Ghana will speak. We fear no Brian Echampo. Even Anado, we don't fear him. Mm. How much more you, Brian Echampo? Anyway. Passing such a reckless comment, like even if the NDC wins, you will not hand over. Anyway. Try it, Brian Echampo. Um, the youth of the NDC will rise up. Try it. Okay. That has been all for the new slot segment, but don't forget to go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all your gadgets. They have Nokia, they have Samsung, they have iPhones, they have, I mean, uh, is it the uh, smartphone you're looking for, smart TV, you're looking for air conditioners, you're looking for CCTV cameras you're looking for? Look no further because they have got it covered for you. Now you can call them on 24 642-2338, or 055-593-9311. Just call them and they'll serve you. Or download the app.
Franco Trader, go on Google App Store, Google Play Store and download the app. You can also go on their website, which is www.francotrading.com. Make sure that you don't get your number from Google because the scammers are on there. Franco Trading Enterprise, still for Papa Perfie. A big thank you to my guests for being here. We are super grateful. We'll take a quick break. Coming up next is Wash Trending. Do stay with us. News Flash was brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise.